Hello again. In the previous videos, we talked about internal quality control material and we classified the material into different kinds of material, assayed, non-assayed, lyophilized, ready to use, quantitative, qualitative, semi-quantitative and different other mechanisms of classifying internal control materials. In this video and the videos to follow, we will concern ourselves mainly with the statistical quality controls which is controlling of quantitative tests. And for other details of qualitative and semi-quantitative tests, the learner is directed to read the quality control module volume 2 for qualitative tests. And uh, we will continue the discussion on statistical controls in this series now. And the, to start with the first concept that we have to understand is that of central tendency. What is central tendency? As stated earlier, QCs are biological material. Well preserved biological materials follow certain rules on repeated analysis and any violation of these rules indicates instability of the analytical systems. Both random changes and systematic changes can be understood as per the rules violated. So, we have to understand the rules and before we understand those rules, we have to understand why these rules even exist. Look at this picture. There are 13 crows sitting on wires and they are all sitting randomly. Is there a specific pattern here? I don't think so. Is there any specific predictable point where the next crow will sit? Is there any fixed pattern? There is any pattern. It's extremely random. Now look at this picture. These are some people standing in ascending order or descending order, whichever way you look at it. And how, how, what do you look at it? Is there a pattern to it? Is there a central point to it? Yes, there is. There is one person who has got the average height from where you have a couple of people who are shorter than him and a couple of people who are taller than him. If you have a next person who is probably between these two, these two people, you would probably want to position that person here. So, there is a pattern, there is a central tendency. The other data points are clustering around a certain central point. This kind of a concept is defined as a central tendency. So, here again, some people are short, some were tall and there is a central point from which the heights deviate. This is called the central tendency. I am just reiterating the tendency for measurements to cluster around a central point is called the central tendency. And but this kind of clustering can be of different kinds. And we need to understand what are these clusterings. So, some examples of clusterings, some leaf arrangements, they are clustered around some points. If you just throw a pile of sand slowly onto the ground, all those sands cluster around a certain central point. These are all defined together as central tendencies. So, clustering of data points around central points is called central tendency. So, we have to understand what is data. Facts and statistics collected together for reference or analysis, we would want to call them as data. And what is a data set? A data set is a collection of data and why and how do data sets cluster around central points? These are the questions we will answer in the subsequent slides. Look at this set of data. There are four sets of data that is given. First one is temperature of a freezer for the month of July and there are a set of numbers here. Second is data set for the hemoglobin values of five normal adult men. Third is salaries of six people in an office and fourth is this transportation taken by people attending the OPD on a certain day. So, the values are repeated. These are values of repeated measurements will be distributed along a central point or location and this is what we call the central tendency. So, whenever there is a central point, we also say there will be a certain amount of variability around that central point. So, these are the two concepts that you have to hold together when you start talking about understanding quality controls. These single central points around which data cluster can be either mean, median or mode. So, these are the three measures of central tendency, the mean being the average, median being the middle value and the mode being the 
most commonly occurring value. Once again, mean calculated average of all the values, median the central value of the data set arranged in numerical order, mode the value which occurs most frequently in a given data set. Let us see examples. Mean is calculated by finding the arithmetic average. Let us look at an example. There are few numbers 4, 6, 7, 9 and 4. How will you find the mean? You can add up the numbers and divide by the total number of uh, there are 5 numbers there and you get the mean. The mean of these 5 numbers is 6 here. Some information on mean. Mean is the most popular and well known measure of central tendencies. Mean may or may not be one of the actual values observed in your data set. It includes every value of the data set as part of the calculation. It is the only measure of central tendency where the sum of the deviations of each value from the mean is always 0. The mean has one major disadvantage. It is particularly susceptible to the influence of the outliers. We will understand each concept as we go along. Let us look at the examples from slide 3, the one which we saw earlier. These are the fridge temperatures that we had defined, minus 2, minus 2.6, minus all these things. So, the sum is minus 28.2 and the mean is minus 2.82. This minus 2.82, if you look at this, it was not a number of the value that you had in this data set and all data points have been included in the calculation and it produces the lowest amount of error from the other values in the data set. So, you look at minus 2.82 being the mean and it represents that number which shows the minimum variation from the other numbers here. So, if you look at this uh, slide, you will understand what I am talking about. It is the most popular and well known measure. It mean may not be one of the actual values. The minus 2.82 was not one of the values in the actual data set and it has included every value to calculate the total average and also it is a measure of tendency where the sum of all deviations will add up to 0. So, these are the points that I wanted to illustrate and again look at the hemoglobin values. These were the 5 values, the sum is 73.2 and the mean is 14.64 which again was not a value in the data set and all data points are included in the calculation and it also produces the lowest amount of error from all other values in the data set. Now, you look at the examples of salaries. You add up all the salaries and you find the mean it is 66,666 and you look at that number and it really does not represent anything because there are salaries with 23,000 to 280,000 and 66,000 is neither near to this number or near to this number. So, it, I, it does not represent the, the point around which the numbers are clustering. So, if you find a mean here, you will find a lot of queuing and here the choice of the central number is evidently not the mean. Look at the transport example also. If you add up everything and you find a mean of 662, this also gives a false impression as to the as the values do not represent the central number. Here again the choice of the central number is not the mean and so we have to think about any other statistics which representative here and we think of the median or the middle value where half of the values are greater than the median, half are less than the median and when the values are placed in numerical order and here this is the median. Find the median of a group of items to do that. You rank the items. If the number of items is odd, the median is the middle item. If the number of items is even, the median is the mean of the middle two numbers. Let us see this example. We have put the numbers in numerical order. This is the numerical order. Middle number. How do you find the middle number? You take away two sides, the smallest number and the biggest number. Then you again remove the next level of smallest and biggest number and what is left is your median. And now, you look at example of median, find the median value of all these numbers, put the data in order and then take away 1 and 6, 1 and 4, 2 and 3 and finally, what is left is your 2 and 3. 
here you will add 2 and 3 and divide it by 2 find the mean of the middle numbers and that is your median and so if you graph it the median will look like this a lot of people in that example were showing lower salary a few people were showing higher salary i'm talking about the salary example here and if you draw the graph you you will find a graph like this which is very different from the graph that we saw earlier when we calculated uh, the mean for certain numbers so those points are clustering around the in the first example that we saw two examples the fridge example and the hemoglobin example you have seen those values are clustering around a point which is the mean and here the values are not clustering around the mean but they are clustering around another point which is called the median and these are the salary examples we cut off the two from the lower side and two from the upper side and you have got two numbers which are the same here so here the median value of 25000 is the point around which the salaries in that office is clustering so i hope you understand the concept of mean and median so we are now going to look at the the example that we had given of the transport here will median work here you arrange the number in numerical order and you chop off the upper and the lower ends and then you are left with 200 is 200 the point around which the the points are clustering not really so that means here median is also not the option to find this point the central point so there has to be some other mechanism and what is that mechanism it is the mode mode is the most frequently occurring value find the mode of these numbers so you look at these numbers 4 is occurring two times so the mode here is 4 the most frequent number is 4 so mode is used for categorical data where we wish to know which is the most common category however one of the problems with the mode is that it is not unique and if there are two or more values that share the highest frequency it will be called bimodal or even multimodal let's see the examples you're taking the transport analogy from the earlier slide there are 50 people traveling by car 2000 by bus 300 by auto 100 by walking and 200 by train if you arrange it you will see there is one mode which is the most frequently used and that is a bus so here the mode is 2000 in the second if suppose you had uh, some other rearrangement of number if car being 50 buses 1500 auto 300 walking 100 train 1400 here you have a bimodal pattern because a lot of people are using two modes so that is a bimodal example so these are the three central tendencies that we see very commonly for in our examples and uh, so here we once again we look at the two situations here mean and mode and median are same this is an example when you see this is your mean and mean is equal to median is equal to mode which means the same number will become the mean and the same number will also be the median and the same number will also be the mode for the data set such kind of a distribution is called normal distribution or a Gaussian distribution and certain data sets mean and median and mode are not normal distribution so what is so important about normal distributions so which measure of central tendency will you choose as a QC monitoring tool and why so normal distribution is exhibited by well preserved biological material on repeated examination where mean is equal to median is equal to mode this is the key principle of your internal QC uh, mechanisms understanding the internal because if the material is well preserved those data points will invariably fall in a normal distribution like a bell shaped curve where the mean is equal to the median is equal to the mode this property is used in the statistical quality control this is what the normal curve looks like and this is called the gaussian distribution and gaussian distribution is very very common in uh, in nature if you take a set of people even if you take a group of 200 people 2000 people 
200,000 people and then take their heights and then put it on the data and you see those heights will be distributed normally. There will be a mean height where the maximum number of people will be, their heights will be and there will be some people will be who will be taller which is your curve onto the, your right side and some people who are shorter which is your curve onto your left side. Take the weight for instance, take anything in biological variations inside of our bodies. If you look at your uh, glucose or any analyte in your body, all these will intra-individual, there is a certain normal distribution. Your, if you take two samples simultaneously at the same point of time, you may find some difference between different points in your body. If you take the sample in the morning versus evening, there will be some variation. But all these variations have the normal distribution and that normal distribution will be within a certain acceptable limit. These are called biological variations and this is this property of biological variation which is used to calculate the biological reference interval also because as studies have shown that there is inter-individual variation between one person to another person is only so much and that is the basis of calculating your biological reference intervals also. So, the normal distribution is a very important parameter in the laboratories both in calculation in your quality control monitoring as well as your biological reference interval calculations. So, that is the importance of the normal distribution. So, once again to recap, this is the normal or the Gaussian distribution, bimodal distribution, skewed distribution. So, this is where you would want to look at the Median as your central number, here is the bimodal where the central number will be the mode and here it is a mean is equal to mode is the normal or the Gaussian curve and this is the basis for the quality control assays. Thank you.